Welcome to Fan Counters. I'm Leanne Parks from the School of Rock National Tour, and for the next hour, me and my friends are taking over the show. This is Sammy Dell. He plays Billy. Hello. That is Gabriella Yule. She plays Sophie. Hello. And that is Cameron Trueblood. He plays Freddie. Hello. And with a little help from me, it's going to be a special hour celebrating the first ever School of Rock National Tour. We're going to have the kids share a lot of stories today, and it all starts right now. Coming to you from nowhere near the entertainment capital of the world, this is Fan Counters with Nick and Elizabeth on the Podfix Network. There was this mob of people, and they're screaming my name. Crazy fans. Stop following me. Don't come around my house. If you do, the cops are going to be at yours. If I'm having dinner with my wife, don't sit down at my table. Don't follow me into the bathroom. Can I take a picture? We're gonna, oh, my God. I think this guy wants to fight me. Ended up being a fan. I'm the only one that's ever been on Sam Jackson and lived to tell about it. <laughs> well, guess what? I have a big surprise for you. That's why we call it Fan Counters. <laughs> I don't think you're going to last on the air very long. <laughs> Sammy, Cameron, Gabriella, Leanne, welcome to Fan Counters. Thanks for being here, guys. Yeah. Leanne's been on the show before, so we've kind of gotten a chance to hear her story of how she got involved with the tour. So I kind of want each of you to maybe tell us a little bit about your audition process and the moment you found out that you were going to go on tour. So tell me what that was like, Sammy. So basically, um, I was doing my own community theater back where I live, and I was able to go to an open call, which is basically an audition, and everyone can go. And I wasn't able to get the role, but I was able to actually continue auditioning, Mm -hmm. Um, and that's when I got my agent to give me more auditions. Then I I got another true audition, and I was able to audition for the Broadway um, tour production. And I was, I was, unfortunately, I couldn't get that role, but I was able to um, get another audition for Billy, and I was able to um, wow their socks off, and <laughs> I was able to get the role. So you were very persistent in going back multiple times. Yes. Now, one thing your mom told me when we were waiting to start the interview today is uh, you had not had an actual huge audience show before being on this tour is that right no yeah so back where i live it's a very small town and where's that where where are you from binghamton new york okay so basically um it's my theater has like 300 to 400 seats and when i got the tour job i think the first audience i had was like 2500 or something like that wow that's a lot really amazing Big difference. Yeah. All right. Gabrielle, tell us a little bit about your story. You're unique, though, because you've been here since the start. Yes, you've never, I have. You've never missed a city or anything. So tell us uh, about how your journey. Um, well, my audition process was similar to Sammy's. I did two open calls, and then a couple of months later, I got a call back for, um, for the show. Mm-hmm. And I did a couple of callbacks. And a week after my last callback, that was when they told me that I was going to be Sophie Understudy Tamika. And how did you get that news? Um, (laughs) It's kind of funny. So I was at a water park and my mom was in Washington, D.C. and Mm -hmm. I was in New York. And my mom found out, (laughs) got the call while I was in the water park. Oh, wow. So... She couldn't tell me yet, <laughs> but when we got out of the water park, my dad, he had like a hundred messages from my mom on his phone and he gave me the phone and she told me that I was going to be on tour. That's awesome. Now, do you have brothers and sisters? I do. I have an older brother and an older sister. And they're both at home? Yes. So who's on the road with you, mom or dad? My mom. Okay. And Sammy, I didn't ask you, what was the moment like when you heard that you got your... So my mom, we had just gotten a cup of Starbucks coffee, and we were heading over to see my dad at his dealership, and there was no real reason that I had known, and so we walked in, and she was like, oh, okay, well, the agent said that um, you should start packing your bags because you're going to go on tour, and we all looked at each other, and we were like, what? And then we finally realized that I was actually getting called to go on tour. Wow. That's very cool. Let's move over to Cameron. Now, you came on around the same time in July, like Leanne, right? Actually, no. I joined six months earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I was a different role then. Walk us through your journey a little bit. Tell us about how you got the role. Before this, I had never done any theater. I think the biggest audience I had ever done anything in front of was like 20 people, maybe. Wow. So That's um, crazy. So 
Um, I've been playing drums since I was about two years old, and I've been just from me and my dad kind of messing around in the garage. I've just gotten better and better until eventually um, one of my parents' friends that liked theater, they said, oh, they're making a School of Rock musical, and we had always seen that movie. We saw it all the time. Mm -hmm. We loved it. And then so we're like, oh, well, let's just audition. It would be cool to say that I auditioned for something like that. And so we did, and then they said, hey, can you come to New York to audition? And we were like, oh, this might actually happen. Wow. So then after a couple callbacks, um, I remember we had just finished, walk, uh, we had watched half of Captain America Winter Soldier, and we were getting ready to go to bed. And then my mom called everybody into the living room, and she announced it, and we were all kind of too tired to fully process what she had just said. And then, so then after, I think it was two weeks later, then, we got on a flight to Austin and I started rehearsing. Wow. And yeah. Those are great stories, guys. That's very cool. I want to jump into what our show's known for first because I don't want to run out of time for it. Usually we always wait till the end and then it's, you know, sometimes forgotten. So I want to know, we always ask our guests what their encounters with fans are like. So I was curious if you guys can tell us some of your favorite cities you've been to and some of the fan experiences you, you've you had. So Leanne, do you wanna start off with um, what, first of all, your favorite city's been, but then tell us some of those fan encounters. Well, my favorite city was probably Fort Worth because it was my debut city. The hall was beautiful and it was just, everything was walking distance and it was a it was a beautiful city. Um, and that was also like one of the like the coolest fan um, fan encounters I've ha- ever had because I was it was in between shows and um, I was have I had did I had lunch slash dinner with some of um, some of my friends and we had just finished and they left and we were just walk me and my dad were just walking around because it was a bit early before call time mm-hmm. um, which is when we have to go to the theater. Um, so I, w- I was walking around, and then this guy was like, were you Katie, um, the bass player in School of Rock? And I was like, yeah. And he whistled his entire family over, and I was taking pictures, and I autographed their programs, and it was really nice. And afterwards, I was like, that felt really nice. I really enjoyed it, especially since they like recognized my face. For sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, so then I we finished walking because it was time to go back to the theater and then while we were walking um these two ladies stopped me and was like were you part of the uh, were you part of the show it was like were you katie the bass player and i was like yeah and they were like oh my god you were so good and then another guy came over was like you were katie the bass player and i was like yeah and it was just really nice and i and i felt really special then i was like oh that's really nice that they know they like they recognize my face and they recognize and they they like come and see me and they're like oh my god were you katie it was just really nice and it felt really nice now your dad told me a story earlier today that he was downstairs in the restaurant at one of these performances and the people had had a school of rock program and they're like yeah did you see the show and he asked and they're like yeah we did and what was your favorite part and they're like katie the bass player and so he went on for a while and then you know told them that it was you so those are kind of neat moments that you know not many people get a chance to get especially when somebody pays quite a bit of money to see a show and then they are sitting right next to the parents of one of the performers. It's pretty fun. Uh, so Sammy, do you have a favorite fan encounter that you've uh, had on the road? So my fan encounter was actually in Boston. And so we were going up to the um, our room and the concierge, um, he had always worn bow ties. <laughs> okay. And I always loved bow ties. Uh-huh. And he had 88 bow ties. Wow. And he was at wearing one um, today, uh-huh. and I went up, and he was like, oh my gosh, your bow tie is amazing. And he took his bow tie off, and he gave it to me. So now he has 87 bow ties, <laughs> but okay. still. And then there was a party that night. Uh-huh. So I went to the party, and it was at a restaurant. And another guy was wearing a bow tie, and he took the bow tie and gave it to me in the same exact day. Oh my gosh. Now a couple of weeks pass, and we go to Cleveland. Okay. And there was a custom bow tie shop. And I was actually able to learn how to tie my own bow ties. And he made, um, the guy there, he actually made me some custom bow ties. Wow. Yeah. So were the bow ties that you had been given not clip-on, obviously? They you were to... clip-on. Oh, were they? Okay. And then I decided to um, you learned how to tie them. move on from clip-ons and start tying them. Okay. I still have the two bow ties there that I own right now. That's awesome. So do you wear them? I oh, mean, yeah. Yeah? Okay. You guys can attest to this? You've seen it? 
Okay. All right. Several times. Several times. All right. And what did you think of Cleveland? And I'm asking because I used to live in Cleveland. I thought Cleveland was amazing. Oh, you thought it was good? We had a three-week sit-down. We were there for St. Patrick's Day. Okay. It was so fun. Does a sit-down mean you have no shows, but you're there? The sit-down um, means like, so usually we're in a city for one week, and then a sit-down would be um, two to, I think, six weeks, usually. Oh, okay, so you're like in Like, in Toronto, we time. stayed there for six weeks, an mm-hmm. entire month through the holidays. And then um, in Cleveland, we stayed there for three weeks. Okay. Uh, did you go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Oh. Yes. Yeah, oh man, yes. everybody got excited. Uh, best part about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Um, who, who is in there? Deidre. What? Like yeah. our cast Deidre? Yes. So s- someone on our cast is from apparently in the Rock and Roll Hall of Yeah, Fame. Deidre Lang. She was one of the original Fly Girls on oh, In Living right. Color. Oh. And there's a video of her dancing in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's pretty cool. Um, Gabriella, do you have a favorite fan encounter you want to share? Um, Not really. Not really? You've been on this tour for two years. <laughs> No favorite fans? No. Oh, you're letting I mean, us down. I'm, I'm like an ensemble part that has a lot of little features that like, they see like, oh, that's the girl that made me laugh, but like they don't really like recognize okay. me. So like, it's hard to explain, but like people don't normally like come up to me and say, oh, did you play Sophie? Right. But I mean, I see people at stage door and I guess they like, they know I'm in the show, but. Okay. <laughs> so people are lining up so outside the stage door, though. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I guess okay. I guess one of my fan encounters could be um, one of the times I went on for one of my understudy tracks um, in St. Louis. I went on as Tamika, mm-hmm. um, and it it just felt fun uh, being able to say like, "Oh, I played Tamika," because like you know. Well, you get a big solo with that role, The yeah. Amazing Grace. Yeah. yeah, and they they actually asked like, "Oh, did you play Tamika?" And I thought that was really cool. Well, and my question is, and I, and I read that you play Sophie. I can't even remember, like, and I've seen the show five times. Uh, what what role Sophie is? Like, does she? Sophie is the roadie. Um, I guess that doesn't really explain what I do, but I have a lot of like little things that I do. Like, I do like a run and a scream. Okay. I I have a fake faint. I have a bubble gum pop uh-huh. like i have like a bunch of like little fun features. stuff yeah fun okay. stuff that's a good way to say good i have like a very busy track like i'm always like moving something or taking something off the stage so if you see anybody that's busy that's probably me okay <laughs> sounds good and cameron tell me about some of uh fans you've met that have let let a lasting impression on you i think i mean when we were in atlanta the thing about the thing about that theater there, it's a really nice old theater. And if the stage door is in a way where if you're leaving the theater, you have to walk past the stage door. Mm-hmm. So literally every per- so and then you see the sign that says stage door. So in Atlanta, it when as soon as you walk out the stage door, it was insane. You could not. There were just so many. Yeah, you could not. There was. It was incredible. There were just so many people came. So so many people came to the stage door to see it. It was really nice. They had to put stanchions up on the last day because there were so many people. Wow. And it was... So it was like Beatlemania. <laughs> it was crazy. It felt really, really <laughs> popular. That's cool. Um, I do have a question for you, Gabriella, specifically because you've been... You went through Los Angeles. So did you get to meet Jack Black? I did. All right. Yes. So tell, I want to hear all about that. Um, I know everybody's here is like... <laughs> Darn I really you. wanted to meet him. Um, it was was very fun to see, like, Jack Black. Yeah. Because we all, you know, we all got out of costume, and then we went on to deck. Deck is, like, a little raised part of the area where we go on stage. And, um, you know, like, wings, like, people call it, like, the wings of the stage. Mm -hmm. Um, like, right outside of the wings is, like, is deck, and it's the same piece of, like kind of getting off topic but um <laughs> anyway okay. we, were, we were on deck okay. and jack black was there and then like everybody starts crowding around it was really cool how long did he interact with you guys um i'm not sure but he like was signing everybody's playbills and okay stuff. so he was super cool yes okay. he was really cool yeah but, and did any of you get to meet andrew lloyd weber oh you, well, the end the end two did there huh? in LA too. Oh, yeah can you he give came, him the mic sorry so 
with Andrew Lloyd Webber actually. So at the L- he was at the L.A. opening night party, and then so so I'm walking in to the L.A. opening night party, and I I was like the last person to actually get there because we couldn't find it, and then so <laughs> as I'm going in. Some, someone walks by me, and I turn around, and I go, wait a second, was that Andrew Lloyd Webber? And then since, since he had just flown in from London, so he was, like, he was insanely jet-lagged, so he was leaving, so I almost got to meet him, but he, yeah, it was a really fun moment. Do You actually did get to meet him? Is that what you're going to tell me? So Andrew Lloyd Webber came twice. He came in, I, th- I believe it was the second city, mm-hmm. um, Columbus, Ohio. Okay. And um, the entire company got to meet him. Uh, that was it. that was like I said the second city, so that was the originals. But he again, he also came in Los Angeles, but very briefly because he probably was very tired because he had jet lag. But yeah, I got to meet him personally, and I got a picture with him. Very nice. Now, Leanne, what song constantly gets stuck in your head from the show? What are you singing around your hotel room and on the bus and all that? Stick it to the man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, like, also since all of the kids really like that song, everyone's singing it, and I'm just like, stick to the man. It's, it's like, it's like giving into the, like, into, like, the master of the song. Is this, and it's really funny, because it's like, like, um, I forget, it was Dallas, actually. It was Dallas. Um, we were doing rehearsals, and, um, the, like, the people who were on the company, like, Ella and Cameron, they were, they were in Las Vegas because we split so we could have like some more quiet time while we were rehearsing so okay. the show wouldn't bother us. Um, so we were swimming and all of a sudden we just started singing, Stick It to the Man, If Only Would Listen, like all of the songs. And it was just really fun because all, all of the kids were in the pool and we were just singing it. And like sometimes it just gets stuck in my head. And like while we're, while we're walking, like me and my dad, when we're walking to the theater, I'll just be like jumping around. It's like, stick it to the man. <laughs> and it's just really funny. Yeah, you guys do not have a problem with energy at all. I mean, you're always bouncing around. And- it's like a plague, to be honest with you. Yeah. One person starts singing it and then everyone around it starts singing it. Were there other people in the area, in the pool, like when you're doing this? that They're all like, what is going on? There here? were a couple people and they started clapping afterwards. Oh, okay. And then, we, and then we were like, you know what? Let's. Let's stop doing it because we don't want to bother them too much. Because yeah. <laughs> the company has a rule and they started videotaping, so we had to yeah. stop. Unfortunately, we, we couldn't continue singing. Sure, when anybody turns on a camera, copyright, all yep. that. Yep, yep totally get jazz. that. Do you guys have songs that get stuck in your head? If only you would listen, I guess, is mine because I have a good solo in it, so I guess I'm always trying to perfect that and keep singing it. Okay. I don't know... I mean, sometimes it really depends. Like, if if we're backstage while a song is playing, then I'll just unconsciously start to sing along with it. Mm-hmm. Like, what, like scenes that we're not in, but we're backstage, and then it's playing on the intercom. And then so that that gets stuck in my head. I'll just start singing along with that without even trying to. Who wants to tell us a little bit about school on the road? I know we talked with Leanne about her, well, like her routine and that kind of thing. Has it changed at all for you? I guess you could start us. Um, you're just still kind of doing the online school, and yeah, most of us are doing the online school. But today and yesterday, um, some of the kids have been doing this Iowa testing thing. Um, I personally just finished it today, but some people are still working on it. But it's like on our own leisure, so it's just like a, it's just a, a test to see like what grade level we're on. But only a couple people are doing it. It's not like mandatory. Okay. But it was just a thing that like, the teachers like said if you if you want to do it and if your parents want to do it and if your school wants to do it you can do it. Um, but other than that, nothing's changed really. I've just been doing my online school and going to school most of the time and just go doing school whenever I can. <laughs> Now, all, the three of you had been in regular school before the tour, correct? No, I got one no and no. so well, let's start. Okay, so Gabrielle, let's tell me about the difference between how you had to adjust from going to school to doing road school. Well, so every night after the show, it takes everybody like a pretty long time to like wind down after just doing, especially on two show days, mm-hmm. um, two shows. So we can end up falling asleep pretty late so our school usually starts from like 11 to 12 sometimes 10 really depends. we're talking at night guys what right 11 to 12 at night yes yeah definitely you do, yes yeah. you do your school at night yeah mm-hmm. yeah 
Yeah, we, we sometimes <laughs> do school at night. Yeah, most of the time. Sammy's very impressed <laughs> that they stay up late to do their and school. And it's always fun when we're doing it together because, like, we're laughing, but we're like, we have to do school or else our parents won't let us do school together. But, like, we're having so much fun to wind down, but we're winding down, too. So, like, we're having fun and, like, using a lot of our energy to wind down and just, like, a perfect thing for yeah, us. Yeah, it's the perfect way for us, for our brains to just, like, get tired. But okay. um, school starts... Uh, like around 11 or 12 mm -hmm. every morning um and depending on how many hours of school we're gonna do that week it's usually around 15 hours um it's from like three to five hours a day and we each have our own online curriculum what doing. do you think school's gonna be like going back oh uh, okay well do you guys want to talk? I mean, it's different for you because you've been on the road for yes. two years <laughs> but like I joined, I started homeschooling at my home when I was, like, three years old. Um, wait, no. I think I actually just turned six. Okay, that's and a big difference. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a little bit better. <laughs> and I just left preschool, and I was going, well, like, I was in the middle of, like, first grade. Sure. And we were like, oh, my gosh, um, let's start homeschooling. Um, because I wanted to do more and I wanted to get my schoolwork done faster instead of having to do as much res as I can in one session right. and then moving to another, another, another on and on for five hours a day. I decided to homeschool and I've homeschooled ever since I was in first grade. Wow. Cameron, let's hear from you about you were in school prior to this. So I kind of was in school. I had been switching schools for a while because we could never, we were looking for the right one. And then a year before this started, we decided to try out homeschooling and it was working really well. And then we got the call for this. So we just kind of been doing the same thing except on tour. Okay. So when we get back, we, we are, we moved over the, while we were on tour. So we're, yeah. <laughs> so didn't start a whole new school. Yeah. So yeah, except, so we're still not exactly sure where we're going to be when okay. we end up back there. But, um, Actually, right now, my mom and two of my brothers are actually in the new city checking out schools. So, okay. yeah. Well, I want to talk about your brother because your brother's in the show, right? Yeah. So how did that happen? Like, was so, he touring with you, uh, you know, v traveling with you? Yeah, he. my entire family travels with me, all six of us. Wow. And then, um, so we've been going since last February, but was it when in Boston, that's... So every, when I auditioned, he would always audition with me too. He, but he was eight when he started auditioning. He turned nine and ten on tour. Wow! And um, so eventually, so he would. They just said he was too little. So he kept auditioning every chance he got, and then eventually they said, "Yeah." And we found out when we were in Toronto, and then he started rehearsals and joined when we were in Boston. Wow. And he plays Mason, the computer lighting effects guy. Okay. So since he was traveling with you, though, how does he audition? Is he auditioning for people that are also well, traveling with the, the production? Wait, sorry, what? Well, because you said he had to audition for yeah. the role. But if he's traveling with you, is he going away to audition? Or is he auditioning for somebody that's touring? Yeah, actually, show? while we were in San Diego, he actually flew out to New York to do an audition. Okay. And then that's when they were, they were kind of still... And then we, we would send in videos also well, when we couldn't leave to do it. Okay. Um, question for all of you. Think about everybody in the cast and who's in the show. We're not really promoting it anymore because it's, it's almost over. So thinking back as a, a look back, who, when you watch them perform, kid, adult, whatever, who blows you away? Who Who is somebody you're like, wow, that person's awesome? I feel like that um, it was Rob. Um, well, all of the Deweys are amazing. They're just so good, and, like, they keep the energy so high, and, like, they get the crowd up their feet. But um, the the um, the old Dewey, um, Rob, mm -hmm. he was just, he blowed my mind every single time. Like, he would always just bring something in, like, something different and new, and it would just be, like, it would be... It would it would just be amazing. And another person would be um, Lexi. She plays Miss Mullins. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And she's been on she, the entire run as well. Yeah. Yep. She is just amazing. Like, whenever she sings, I'm just in awe. I'm just like, 
I wish, I wish that you could just sing for me forever. <laughs> she's just so good and she's so talented, and I just feel, I feel like she, like every single, every single time she sings her solo, um, where did the rock go?、Mm -hmm. Every single time, like I, I like feel something different, and it's just, it's just, it's, it's beautiful. Very nicely said, Sammy. Who blows you away on stage? Lexi Dorsett Sharp as well. Okay. So I have a story that I'm going to share. Good. So, a person who just recently left, Liam, Liam Fennekin. Um, we were in an elevator and we were going down, and Lexi came in, and she said, "Hey, y'all!" And her voice echoed through the elevator. If she, if basically, if she said it any louder, she would have shattered the glass on the elevator. <laughs> And it was with ease.、Um, she exited the elevator, and Liam said she's the most professional person he has ever worked with, and he's been on some amazing tours. Wow! And that has sticked with stuck with me forever. And I have to say, no matter who comes on tour or leaves tour, she is probably will always be my most professional person I've ever worked with. And how is she with the, with you guys? Does she interact? And yeah, she's、know. really nice. Cameron, why don't you tell me? Theo Mitchell Penner. <laughs> okay, he was the former. Was, yeah,、um, he was the original Lawrence,、yep. uh, piano player. He was. He his piano playing is incredible. He's a great actor. He was just. He brought so much enthusiasm to the stage. He was. He's really. He was great. And you play Freddie in the show, right?、Yeah. Freddie, is he a player? I forgot. Yeah, he plays the drums. Oh, 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 that's right. You're the drummer. Yeah. How long have you been playing drums? I've been playing drums since I was. You, wait, you mean like on tour or? Uh, in general. I've been playing drums when, since I was two years old, but、okay. I started on tour, like I started on tour actually when Leanne and Sammy joined. Okay. You want to tell me about、um, who blows you away on stage? <laughs> Obviously, Lexi Dorsett Sharp. <laughs> She's just amazing, and our original Patty. Her name was Emily Bormeo. <sighs> I just,、mm -hmm. I just thought she was the best. I mean, she was great to like sing with. Like she and I would like jam out backstage and、um, heck, have fun every every show.、Um, but she's just really nice, and her performing is just incredible. And even though Patty, like honestly, isn't on stage like that long in the show, she just made it feel like she like. Had the entire show just in her hands, and yeah, she、really、stole the show. So in the audience, loved when Ned goes, "Shut up!" At the end, and everybody just starts clapping because、yeah, they just had so much.、Amazing. They've had enough of Patty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and she had like a completely different personality. Oh, really?、Like、Patty、yeah. is so much different. She's so much meaner than Emily was. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know a little bit about what the notes are like. For you guys, from the directors, now that this tour has been going on for so long, you've been on stage for, you know, I don't even know how many performances. You probably know how many you've been on for, but over six hundred. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so hit three hundred. Three hundred shows. Same here. Like six hundred fifty. That is just crazy to think about、yeah. that number. Six hundred fifty. So, what are the notes like, and how do they pick what they're going to rehearse? And are you still rehearsing at this point in the tour? So. We have some rehearsals,、um, but basically, like notes, like our stage managers and our、um, dance captain and our assistant dance dance captain, they'll go out in the audience and they'll watch the show or from the wings they'll watch the show and they'll decide, oh,、um, I think you should do、um, this a little bit differently or don't do that instead do this. Okay.、Um, and they'll kind of tweak us to the point where the show is perfected. Gotcha. Yeah, our rehearsal process. We don't like rehearse the show. We, we, we do, but、um, <laughs> it's it's not to practice the show because we've done it so many times.、Mm -hmm. Like for me, I have an understudy.、Oh, I have multiple understudy tracks.、Um, so for most rehearsals, like if we get a new cast member, they'll be rehearsing, so they need other people with them. So they'll put understudies in their understudy tracks and swings into their understudy tracks. Yeah, I understood he actually Cameron. I understood he Freddie. Okay, so you're both doing the drums. Yes. So you probably have rehearsals together. Um. Well, usually, um, me and Jacob Moran, he's the other Freddie understudy. Usually, we'll go and I'll go for an hour, and then Jacob will go for an hour, and we'll switch on and off. Okay. Um. 
cast members have come and gone. We've talked about that. Yes. Um, and Gabrielle, since you've been here since the beginning, you've worked with every single Dewey. Does it change? Does it matter who's in any of these roles? And any of you can speak to this, but you know, your job is your job. I get that. But the chemistry changes. So is it, there a time period in which it's kind of awkward to be performing with these people, especially Dewey, who's got such a close role with the children? Yes, definitely. So um, I've kind of gotten used to <laughs> getting new new people and especially like new kids because every six months there's always a group of kids that goes and a group of kids that joins. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the first time that any of the kids left, like that was like the hardest for me because that was like the first time I ever had like anybody leave. But <laughs> kind of sad, but I've gotten used to it. It's just, it's the theater world. Yeah. Yeah. Had you done shows before this one? Yes. Um, this is my first tour, but okay. I would do local theaters. Um, so I started out like doing like, you know, school plays and stuff. But I started auditioning for like Broadway and tours as I was starting to do like more regional theaters. And okay. then this was my first tour. Have any of you been home since you've been on tour? Actually, since before this tour, I lived in Los Angeles. So it was actually really nice when I got to when the tour got to go there because I could stay because that's where I, I got to stay at my house. And it was really nice to just be home for a while. And then. Later, when we went to Costa Mesa, mm -hmm. then again, I um, when that was when we had we had already decided, okay, we're gonna move. So then, when we were Costa Mesa on the last night there, we drove up, spent the night at our house, and then we knew that was probably gonna be the last time we were gonna be there. Wow. So and then we so we got to have one more night there, and it was really it was really nice. And then we flew to Las Vegas. Okay, so you did get. It, it, it was like home, but it was kind of like saying goodbye to home, too. Yeah. So what do you guys miss most about being in your home city, in your own bed, with your family, holidays? T talk to me about, like, just missing home and and what that's like, too. <laughs> well, as Leanne just said, she doesn't have a home. <laughs> so the part that I miss about home, I live in a very, like, not busy neighborhood. And I live three hours away from the city. So I have my friends, I have my little bubble that I live in, and then once in a while I go out to the city and I audition. But I have my friends um, Anthony and Angelina, and we've always, we've known them since we've moved there. They're my best friends. And it was really hard to like leave them for six months, nearly a year. Mm -hmm. it, it was really hard. Especially leave my dad, my dog, my sister, leaving everything behind right. to join the tour. Do you feel like you're giving up a lot of stuff to do this? Yeah. Yeah, but you're getting experiences too that mm -hmm. they're not yep. that nobody back home is getting. No, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I know we're jumping back and forth. Maybe you can all talk to this, but what's one of the things that you do, kind of to get yourself show ready before that curtain goes up? What's the the pre-show rituals? I um I do my my own warm ups. So um before the show we usually always have warm ups. We have a vocal warm up and a physical warm up. Um so we do that and after after that, um we have like a couple minutes until half hour, which is thirty minutes until the show the show time. Um when like when I have like ten minutes or so, I usually just get dressed into my costume, um, and then I go to hair um, at ha um, at half hour. I, I get my hair done, um, and it's always a local, so the person who works at the sh um, at the theater, not um, on tour with us. So someone so a local always does my hair. And is then, that weird to have somebody different all the time? It's actually quite interesting because I can like I can meet new people um, and see like like the way they do my hair like all of them they do it amazingly um but i like it i like when it like i like <laughs> when okay. i can see i like it when they do it differently because it's just really cool because like the slightest difference can make it so like so much cooler or like it, it's just a really fun thing um so i i get my hair done i go back um whatever the latest trend is like um this week it's been origami. Ella has been teaching all of the girls how to do origami, okay. which is nice. 
So it's it's just really fun, and we hang out with each other, and it's just like half hours, kind of like just a. But we also have to we can't go too crazy because we have to save our energy and build it up for the show. So we're like going, we're having fun, but we're not being crazy. So it's it's just a fun thing, and we can also go to um the boys' dressing room. Um, always fun stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, like oh, what? Hey, something going on. <laughs> Always there's crazy always, stuff. There's always something going on. Like we had, we've had so many trends. Like um, one of our head wranglers, she turned us on to the Nintendo Switch, which is a new gaming console, and we actually got into Rubik's cubes. Oh, yeah. Now, uh-huh. like everyone can solve at least one Rubik. Yes. yes, like I can solve a Rubik's cube. Ella can solve a all Rubik's cube. All, of us, yeah. all, all four of us. All of you guys can. All of us can solve Rubik's cubes, and especially because there's like. The four by four, the three by three, the two by two. There's so many. There's, there's so, so many. many. The the pyraminx. There's too many to count. So. Holy cow! Like, I didn't even pyraminx. know there were that many. <laughs> like, Did you solve the ones that that I gave you? I gave Leanne some Milwaukee bad. Brewer logoed. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't figure them out, but I brought them home because I didn't want them to break. <laughs> but I'm I'm going to You're solve work them. On it. I'm okay. going to solve them. It's also hard because I don't know what the pictures look like. Right. Oh. Because you already oh, you already mi- you already mixed them up before you gave it to no, me. No, my daughters mixed them oh, up. Oh, your daughters mixed them up. I was trying to give you new ones, but <laughs> so I was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Well, you'll figure it out. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm gonna try it. to figure it out after tour. Be like, I must solve this today, or it's, it's your goal. Something will no happen. Dinner. <laughs> no dinner. Yeah, no dinner. No dinner. <laughs> no dinner. <laughs> Um, pre-show ritual, Gabrielle, do you have something? Um, quite similar to Leanne's, I get in my costume. I, me and Ariana, so we, we call it like emo girls. We walk across the stage, we say one line, and then we go have to do a quick change into our Horace Green costumes. Mm. So at the beginning of the show, all of the other girls get dressed into their like school outfits, but we get into this like punk rock like totally weird costume and we get wigs um it's a little different but mostly the same we go we go to hair i always have the same hair local as leanne actually okay um i get my wig on i go back to the dressing room we have mic check so we check uh the one of the audio guys they always check our mics to make sure that it's in the right placement so that the audience can hear us and then we have when it's five minutes until the show starts, everybody sits at their station and we be quiet and we kind of just like reflect and make sure we're ready for the show. And then then they call places and that's when the show starts. Okay. So same kind of the same thing where except the boys do their own hair though. So we get our co- as soon basically as soon as we get our costumes on and our hair done, then we can just kind of I mean yeah, we can't be insane, but we can kind of relax, read, do Rubik's Cube, stuff like that. Or And then, um, yeah, when they call five, we're silent. And then that's that's pretty much when we get ready for the show. And then we go and get our coats on while the show is, like, about to start. That's when we're getting our coats on. And then we go back to the dressing rooms, and then we wait for... And then, then by then, the show's playing on the intercom, so we have a lot of weird traditions that we do. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on, spill okay. the beans. <laughs> All right, so w- which one? So we do Rubik's Cube races. We do all sorts of things. Um, well, like to the to the show, I think. To the show, like <laughs> I I warm up again sometimes in my mind. I always go through all my blocking usually, especially when I go on as Freddie. I always I have a binder that tells me tells me everything I need to do. So I always look over that like. 12 times. I'd be like, where do you day. start? A big book like that, you know? Uh, and then after that, it's really just flying by the seat of your pants. You go to all the numbers and you see what's going to happen on stage. Yep. Mm-hmm. And does that pre show noise like really pump you up? Oh, does it yeah. ever make you nervous? Not anymore. Not, yeah, I figure not anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've never been nervous. No matter where I go, I've never been nervous on stage. Even it's on like an opening it's, night. Yeah, it's like my home. Yeah, it's like, what? It's like, literally, it's like my home. I could live on the stage with thousands of people watching me. When I'm doing a show for the first time, mm-hmm. like for the first like week and a half of doing this show, mm-hmm. I was nervous. But then once I like started to just go like in autopilot and like just do it without yeah. really thinking about it, that's when I start 
kind of relaxing about it. But then for my debut for understudy tracks, that's when I get nervous again. Okay. But then once I do my understudy tracks enough, then it's just all the same. Got a couple fun questions coming up. But the last School of Rock question I want to ask is, are there any unheard stories or crazy mishaps or any behind the scenes stories that you can share with us that this will probably air once you you know are almost done so feel free to tell us anything uh i would we, we would love to hear some you want roadhouse um i'll let you say because you've been on the tour longest she's seen everything I'm trying to think of like a funny one because I yeah. I have there, a lot of I stories. Wanna, I well, <laughs> there have been some scary ones, so I won't share this. But well, what would be scary? So oh. you say things like that, it piques my interest now. Okay, well, in in tech, um, tech is like when we get into the theater right. and we like rehearse the show like in costumes and lighting for the first time. Right, because every theater is There's, a little bit different, uh-huh. I'm sure. As you've seen the show, there are gigantic panels. Mm -hmm. And during one of the transitions, unfortunately, I was hit with one. Yes. yes. (laughs) Like it fell on top of you? No, 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 it did not fall down, Uh but it was like, it was turning. So, and I was coming at it and I had never like done the transition in a show before. and, And that's why we have tech. So I'm... I'm glad it happened because now it will never happen again, hopefully. <laughs> you were not hurt? I was. Oh, you were? Uh, I didn't have to like go to the hospital. Or I just oh. had a gigantic bruise on my hip. Okay. And I kind of still have a scar. But Ooh, <laughs> yeah, it was, Lasting it was memory. pretty bad. And I couldn't do the rest of the day. But it could have been worse. So, so the understudy study got an unexpected those call. Happen. Mm-hmm. Those things happen, yeah. Okay. I have a funny story. Um, I was not like I. I've just I heard the story once. So um, it was Natalia's um, Natalia Bingham. She was one of the um, one of the swing one of the swings. Um, so she understudied Sophie, Katie, Summer, and some uh, Marcy. I think yeah. yeah. Um, and she was doing her put in for Sophie. Okay. And in math scene where she, he's where Dewey's like math is a wonderful thing. Bef- um, all of us we like take a U turn to get to our desk spikes, <laughs> no and idea. Natalia, she couldn't find her spike. And usually when like something goes wrong in a put in, like someone misses a spike or something, um, the uh the dance captains are like hold hold please hold please, um, so they can fix it. Um, and like and rehearse it again. And it again. But Natalia, she couldn't find her spike. So she was like, hold please, hold please. <laughs> so she called hold and She took charge. Like she didn't understand. Like <laughs> Yeah, she was just like, I can't find my spike. Hold please, hold job. please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Um, how many posters do they have, by the way? Because uh, Dewey rips up Summer's poster. Like, oh, is there like, like a the stack somewhere? Poster? Unlimited. Yeah, yeah there's, yes, there's, there's a big stack. There is a box where they store them. And Unlimited. we literally just, yeah. well, not literally, but a couple of weeks ago, we got an entire, like, I don't know, like, we had, like, we probably got over a thousand uh, new posters. Why did we get a thousand? Because we're the school of rock. Oh, we but we got, like, a thousand posters, and we still have a gigantic box left. And literally, they're completely different. Like, they're, like, made out of cardstock. Right. Because, yeah. like, one time we were, um... So he, Summer brings him over to the gold star chart and he was like, mm-hmm. what kind of sick school is, is this? And he rips it off the yep. wall. Well, ri- in ripping it off the wall, he ripped it in half. Because. Because, it so it was already ripped it in half. And yeah. Was like, oh, I will do this again. And he <laughs> kept ripping it up. Any other good moments behind the scenes? Cameron? So this one's definitely not behind the scenes. It's yeah. very, it's <laughs> like it's very, very in front, in front of, the of the scenes. <laughs> yeah. So. I ride a bike at the beginning of the show. Oh, oh no. I've done some pretty stupid things on that bike. <laughs> so um, during that transition when, we're, when all the kids first come out on stage, I'm riding the bike. Some kids are riding scooters. And then panels are turning all over the place. These things are really a bit. A bed is moving mm-hmm. through, yep. um, across yeah. the stage. There's, there's a lot of people all over the place. So one time, I'm biking across the stage. And the panels are turning. And Miss Mullins is yelling at me for Mike across the stage. Right. So I like didn't look I did something weird. I forget how it happened, but I ended up biking directly into a spinning <laughs> panel. 
Wow. So Sounds like, like, you... like just if I was biking and I just like went into a wall, just like <laughs> right into it. It was the, so I picked up, so the panel stopped turning. I picked up my bike and I walked off stage. This is in front of 2000 people. And I felt very happy with myself after that moment. Happy? <laughs> Another, no. <laughs> Another time. What city was that in? I forget. Do you guys remember? Um, oh, 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 oh. I was like, I think it's something that big you wouldn't forget. Was it profit? Well, like one time you you know. turned and your wheel slipped out from under. Oh yeah, another the time I flipped. just crashed center stage. Oh, oh my god! My and goodness. literally his bike like flipped. Over. Yeah, like the wheel turned in a weird way. Yeah. Like we're gonna reassign the bike roll. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Jeez. Wait, I'm trying to think of another funny one because I have a lot of stories. One. There's a funny one. Right? So this is why this podcast is good, though, because you tell all these stories. You never tell anybody else. Nobody gets to hear these ever. No. Your newspaper people aren't asking you these yeah. questions. So <laughs> Nope. Joe, when he missed the line. Oh, oh, no, that's oh with, times. Okay, so that, that one time, was... one time with um a $10 bill. So in the movie, oh, that in the show, oh, he's like, the um, okay, I have $10. Right, go get me something um, to eat. So yeah, there's good. there's two times. And he walked up, and he was like, um, hey, got any money? I was like, um. No. And he was like, I'm okay, to, well, I'm supposed to gonna, have it, but yeah, I didn't. He was in his desk oh. and he forgot to get it. And so he walked up and he was like, no, I don't have any money. And I was like, okay, um, well, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go out and you give me a large meatball, so blah, 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 yeah. blah. And I'll Venmo you. And he walks <laughs> off stage. And then another yep. time with the OG um, original um, Freddy, yeah. he just didn't have the $10 yeah, at he all. He was, and he was whispering to Dewey, like, I don't Oh no! We the ten dollars. What do we do? And I don't remember. Someone else was there, like in the front row. What? I was told there was someone important in the front row. Did and they give they me ten bucks? And I was like, I heard you didn't have the ten dollars. <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, is it real ten dollars? No. no. Yeah, Just paper. I figured. Our our hours almost up, so let's end with some fun questions. Um, summer's coming up. You're gonna be off tour. What are we gonna do for the summer now? Oh, everybody's got their oh hands up. Oh my gosh. Up. That's all right. <laughs> Me and Cam, Cam, Cameron are like, what? <laughs> I want everyone's answer. So whoever wants to start. Leanne, you want to give it a shot? Okay. okay. All right. So uh, since I just moved to Philadelphia, because I moved to Philadelphia and then I went on tour. Right away. So I haven't been really, I haven't really been there. Like, and I haven't really done any touristy things. So after tour, we're just going to have four a month ish of, of just doing touristy things, hanging out as a family and just just being together and having fun. And then after that, I'm going to Chi- uh, Asia for four weeks. Wow. So I'm going to Taiwan and then I'm going to Singapore and then I'm going back to Taiwan and then I'm going to China and then I'm coming back. Wow. So I have a summer vacation thing in no Asia. No kidding. Ha <laughs> ha. Sounds awesome. <laughs> now, I know a few things about <laughs> Philadelphia. Um, one of the biggest tourist attractions in Philadelphia is the Eastern State Penitentiary. Have you heard about this? No. So it's a prison that's closed, of course, but uh, it's rumored to be haunted. <gasps> Ooh, fancy. Sounds right. like Alcatraz. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, it's just like that. It's very like run down and everything, and you can take tours. They show you the hole where somebody escaped. Like It's this prison wall, and it goes around the city. The wall goes like 15 or 30 feet into the ground, and they had to dig all the way underneath the wall to be that's able to cool. escape. But because this was like... 1900s or something that you, you'll find out on the tour um but there was nothing around philadelphia at that time so these prisoners escaped but half of them turned themselves back in after like a couple days because they didn't know what to do they were starving they couldn't get food they didn't know where to go they knew they had you know they would be accepted <laughs> back in so that's what they did so you'll have to check that out wow. that's my tip that's on cool. philadelphia okay your turn all right your turn sammy okay this might take a little while. Oh man! <laughs> so here's Settle what I'm in, gonna guys. do. Here's what I'm gonna do on tour. No, on vacation. Nothing. That didn't take long at all. Nope. Nothing. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm gonna be a 12 year old boy. There I'm you gonna go. stay home. I'm gonna watch movies. I'm gonna play with my friends. I'm gonna be a 12 year old boy. Now, obviously, I'm still gonna audition. Right. But there's a thing called a dead zone when you're too tall to play yeah. a kid and you're too young yes. to play a an kid. Adult. My family an calls adult. it no man's land. No man's land. And well, let's just say it's area? five feet. And I am 58 inches, <laughs> unfortunately. Stop growing right now. I, I wish I could. I, I, had to start, I had to start drinking coffee. Yeah. 
All right, Gabrielle, which, you have uh, got to be Johnson for a vacation. <laughs> oh, yes, we are going on a vacation. Uh, we are going to Florida. There's um, a place in Florida called Anna Maria Island that um, my family really likes to go to when we, whenever we go on vacation. So we're going to go there during the summer. Um, I thought she was going to say Disney World. I'm oh. going to Disney World. I already went. I already went. Oh, you did. Many, okay. many times. All right, well. I'm very obsessed. But... Um, I'm just excited to go home and spend time with my brother and sister and dad because the longest time that I've been able to spend with them is a week Mm -hmm. since I've been on tour. Well, my brother and sister came for the holidays um, when we were in Toronto just recently, but I'm pretty sure that was only for two weeks. Uh, I'm excited to just do stuff that like a regular girl would do, like paint my nails. I'm hoping I can cut my hair. Um... That's right, because you guys really can't neighbors. change your appearance while you're on tour, no. can you? Nope, not at all. No, 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 not at all. Yeah, I really want to get a pixie cut. I want to donate my hair. Very nice. I want to go back to the water park that I found out I was in yeah. here. That was gonna <laughs> that, be, that, that was the last cool. time I was at. Yeah, that was the last time I was yep. at that water park. I'm Start and end to go the back journey. There. Yep. And I'm just, I'm just excited to go home. I just want to have my summer off. As Sammy said, I still want to like audition for stuff. Yeah. Right. But I want to have like at least a month or two off because I, I've been on tour for two years and yeah. I just want to go home. I just figured out what I was going to do. Okay. So there's a camp where I live called French Woods Festival. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. It's a very well-known camp and... Um, it's a three-week sleepover camp, and I'm going there, and they have all sorts of stuff. They have rock band, they have musical theater, they have skate park. I actually learned how to skateboard there. Wow. Um, they have so much stuff. They have there. It's right on a lake. It is one of the best camps I've ever been to, and I'm going there. Um, like, let's see, I leave on June 10th. And the, the day next, after the, the show, nec- the, day after the day after the, the last show, show, I'm leaving what? again. What? So I will see my, my I will sleep oh, in my man. bed once, and then I'm leaving again for another That's three crazy. weeks. That's <laughs> crazy. Not three weeks. Yeah, at least it's not another six months. Yeah. Two years. <laughs> well, I mean, there's a chance I might be going for an, another session, which is another three weeks. So Yikes. possibly. So six weeks. Yeah. So possibly a month. She's doing the math. A little bit you. more over the month. A little bit over the month. All right, Cameron, so, what are you going to do? I'm just, so I have been to the city where I'm moving, but it was just for like a day because we didn't know for sure where, if we were going to move there when I went there. Mm-hmm. And um, I was on vacation that week and Sammy got to be gone as Freddy four times. And so, so, um, so I kind of know the town and I've seen the house where I'm going to stay and I've seen pictures, but, um, so when we, so, but when we get there, yeah, I'm just we're just gonna kind of settle in. We're, I know we're gonna start to grow a garden, and we're just kind of gonna explore the town. Yeah, that's great. Sounds good. Um, you guys miss out on a lot of uh, pop culturey kind of stuff while you're on the road, I'm sure, because you're performing at night and stuff. But yeah. do you have favorite TV shows that you like to watch that are can't miss or anything like that? Leanne's gonna start. Me and my dad have recently decided we wanted to watch um, Young Sheldon slash Big Bang Theory. Yeah. So, but we don't do it like on the TV. We just um, buy like the seasons on iTunes. Okay. But it's it's a fun it's a fun show. Like Big Bang Theory is a really fun show, and it's just a nice thing to kind of wind down afterwards because you can just like. And we can just like be in the same bed, um, eat like blueberries, like a bunch of berries, and it's just it's, <laughs> yep. it's just a nice. It's, just, it's a wind down kind of activity. It's just a nice yeah. way to wind down, it's, and it's really funny. So it's like it's not like it's like a documentary about how like eyes work. Right. <laughs> how eyes work. Oh, oh, it's her dad is covering his face, which means um, he she must have watched something like been forced no, to I watch something. I oh, she didn't. Do it. Uh, so, is is young Sheldon your favorite character? Because the sister is kind of sassy. I could see you liking yeah, her more. I like, yeah, I like her. I like her and Mima. Those are my yeah. two favorite characters. And then Big Bang, I like um, Raj, which is one of um, Sheldon's best friends. Mm-hmm. Well, his colleague, right? Because he doesn't have any friends. <laughs> he has colleagues. <laughs> well, he he doesn't ha- he doesn't have emotion. He has no emotion. <laughs> So, not on tour, but back home, I I started watching The Flash, okay. which is a DC um, series. Marvel, right? Um, DC. Oh, it's, it's is associ- that different. It is, oh, okay. It's a so it's 
technically it should be associated okay. with Marvel, but it's not. Um, but basically, um, when I came on tour, um, I've only watched, I just finished season three of The Flash, and they have five seasons. And um, I realized so many people were watching The Flash here. And I realized that you could watch season four on Netflix now. Oh, well, there So you go. I've been catching up on that. Mm-hmm. And then season five came out. <laughs> now you have and I watched thing to nine binge. episodes of it. And since they stopped um, filming the episodes, they took it off for a little bit. And they're not planning on putting it back on YouTube until 2020. And that I'm so forever. annoyed. Because I ha- now I have to download the um, DW app, I'm pretty sure. Or CW. I'm not sure Something which one. Something like that, yeah. I'm not sure okay. which one. Gabrielle? There's no TV that I'm really, like, obsessed with. But, like, after the show, um, I normally just do school. Boring. No. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm planning to be done in a week or two. So okay. that's really exciting. Yeah. But I like Friends, and that plays after the show, so... Sometimes I watch that, but most of the time I have Netflix on my computer, so I just... You'll find something. I'll find something, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And Cameron, how about you? So before the tour, my family didn't really didn't have a TV at home, but so we always loved to play old video games whenever we could. Now, we couldn't... They're not... You can't... It's hard to find them sometimes, but um, actually across... Well, not across the street, but near my house, they have a place where they have um, Galaga and Pac-Man and stuff oh, like that. Oh, nice. So when Ooh. I said that I got to visit my home at the end of Costa Mesa... And so we had gotten an Atari for Christmas, but we couldn't find a TV that hooked up to it. No TV Atari. would work with it. And then so I walk into the house, and then the Atari is sitting hooked up to a TV. And then so when we get back, we're going to get to do stuff like we're going to get to play the video games that our dad has told us so much about. That's fantastic. Yeah, because yeah. uh, Atari doesn't have HDMI, so kind exactly, of out of luck. Exactly. Yep. We yeah. couldn't find any TVs with like the yellow white cord (laughs) and i'm kind of going off topic but like now where i live they have an old school um, arcade and like in the back of a building you can play everything pac mag frogger galaga what dig dug probably they have it's this huge building and they have all of the old games it's so fun well, I could talk to you all day, but you guys have to eat dinner and perform tonight. So yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go with one last thing. If you want to tell us about websites where we can find you, social media channels where we can find you, if you want followers and all that kind of stuff. Um, I know Leanne's got a blog. Tell, tell me where we can find that again. My website's called leanneparks.com and my Instagram account is leannebarbaparks. Yeah, it's simple. <laughs> okay, sounds good. My Instagram is the official Samuel Ross Dell. Mm-hmm. Might be the fourth. You can try whichever one you want. Um, <laughs> it might be the fourth. Yeah, I'm the fourth. Samuel My Ross Dell, oh, the fourth. Okay. All right. I have so many. I'm the fourth. That's not great. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, and I don't have a website. Okay. Hopefully soon I will. <laughs> All right. I have nothing. No, but you know what? Out of the four, well, out of the three of you, because I, I knew enough about Leanne where I didn't have to Google her, your, more information comes up about you on this tour than anybody else. Wow. If you search, if you really? Search, yeah. Yeah. You can, you can search. If you search like, like any of the kids on the cast and you mm-hmm. press images, there's just a bunch of pictures of them. And um, yeah, when, like, when I, because I was, one day I was just, randomly like just typing in all of the kids names and i typed in your name and i was like oh my god there's so many things about her yeah. oh my god but it's probably because you you've been on tour so long that there's just been so much information so even though you don't have a website there's still like so much stuff and it's like if you even like just like El- gabriella yule it's just like boom 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 it's like pictures of you like when you were nine it's just well, amazing <laughs> there you go there you go yeah. you're on you just don't know you're on and cameron are you online at all nope okay <laughs> nope. i um there we go. So, yeah, pretty much nothing. I mean, we have a YouTube channel that's nine years of pure stupidity. Go look it up. It's amazing. Yes. Oh, see, that's, the that's best. good to promote. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's the best it thing in the world. It's Amber True Blood. Okay. No, it's, okay. that's what it is. It's nine years of okay. us being it's, stupid. It's the best thing <laughs> in the world. I've watched like every single video. All and right. It's so good. We'll have to check that out. Yeah. Last question. Um, who knows? Because I'm from Wisconsin. All right, that's where we do the cool. show from, except we're in Iowa, 
right now. Yeah, right. So what candy is famously made in Wisconsin? Buckeyes. That's Ohio. Oh. But, <laughs> but, but really good try. Cheese. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, cheese candy. Wisconsin is Isn't for it cheese. that long thing that's in like the triangle? Oh, the tr- trouble or something? Yeah. I don't know, but that's not what I brought you. Oh, you brought us stuff? Oh, what? Yeah, I bring gifts. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's Anybody? Good. No idea? Uh, cheese curds. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. Oh, my gosh. I had Andy cheese curds at a restaurant. They were so good. Wisconsin is the Off home topic. of Jelly Belly Jelly Beans. Really? Oh! <laughs> jelly Beans! They so, love those! Never that. Let's Me see. Either. Here we go. I uh, mean, like, the fif- 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 so fif- everybody's going to get a Fan Counters mug. Oh, and uh, Thank you so much. Jelly Belly thank Jelly Beans. You. Oh, I'm gonna Thank grab you. The mic. Oh, my Thank hand. you guys for joining us today. Thank Good you. luck in your future once this tour is over. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Uh, next week, we do return with another great guest. So we want you to come back, tell a friend, share our show with your friends, and uh, invite some people along for uh, a summer drive with us. You can follow us on social media. Join our group on Facebook, Sharpie Nation. And if you want to see us on Twitter, you can at Fan Counters Live. Make sure you join us uh, next week for another great guest on Fan Counters. And we'll talk to you then. This was a podcast from the Pod Fix Network. You can check out more shows like it at podfixnetwork.com.